Yeah. Okay. So today, we were going to watch SpaceX. But they kind of scrubbed the mission. Also, welcome to Daily Space. I am so out of it. Thank you for your patience. Uh, yeah, SpaceX canceled their canceled and rescheduled the launch for Saturday, which I may or may not cover. It depends on my schedule because everybody here at CosmoQuest is getting ready to go to the American Geophysicist Union conference in early December. So people have posters to make. You know, I have a video to make. Um, Etc. 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 So, yeah, that's what's going on. Anyways, so on today's on to today's news. Let's see if I can. Please bear with me, cause this is a first for me. Oh no, I can't see anything now. I can't see anything now. I need like. Two more monitors and I will be happy. So I know you guys can see me, but I can't see like anything on my screen. Hi Michael. Alright, so on to today's news if I can make it happen. Maybe. <laughs> Why isn't this ever working for me? I feel so inadequate right now. Thank you all again for your patience. Aha! There it is. Kind of. Oh, I see what the problem is. It forgot what window it wanted. There we go. Okay. <sighs> I can do this. I can do this. So. Transition over. So, since I cover launches, we are going to talk about mostly. Hi, Pamela! I swear I'm not trying to screw this up. I promise. <laughs> Thank you. So, this also wasn't the layout I had intended to use, but things are happening. So, yeah, we're going to talk about. ISRO or ISRO because they really do go by ISRO just like we use NASA instead of NASA. Um, ISRO stands for Indian Space and Research Organization, I believe. And they have 100 missions planned. No, I have that backwards. Where are my notes? Here are my notes. They have... 10 missions planned for the next 100 days. So that is four launch vehicles and six satellites. And I'm not entirely too sure how all the math works, but I know some of the satellites are being launched by Arian Space out of Kaoru in French Guiana. I think I'm pronouncing all of that correctly. Hey Guido! So, they are launching a thing tonight. And they are launching uh, Hysis. Which, why aren't you doing the thing? Oh. <sighs> Me, PowerPoint will work. It'll totally work. Oh my goodness. So anyways, they are launching um, HISIS, which is a short for Hyperspectral Imaging Satellite. And it'll do Earth observation and SSO, visible near infrared and shortwave infrared. So that's pretty cool. I know that the Indian military also has plans to use it. So, yeah, thanks for the link. Hi, Susie. I am trying to 
make technology work and it's I want to scooch just the way that it is it is not working for me but we're just gonna power on I think properties why why aren't you why aren't you doing the thing nope nope I don't know why it's doing the thing uh no it should be it should be PowerPoint PowerPoint should be doing the thing and it's not doing the thing it's not switching to the next slide like it just shows the first slide Urgh. yeah my PowerPoint is totally evil and I'm flipping through I swore this worked last night anyways so they're launching Hisis tonight and along with 30 other satellites I have to use <sighs> I have to use really really I have to use display capture why why does this have to be so difficult oh my goodness well Oh well. Just let us see the navigation bits in full window PowerPoint. Okay, so let's see if I can make that happen real quick. It won't even show my presenter view. That's hilarious. <sighs> okay, let's see what this does. Close the presentation down. No, it doesn't even show it. Thanks, Microsoft. Thanks. You're doing me a real solid. Okay. So we're just going to stick with chat then. I apologize. So yeah. Um, I can at least look at my notes. Hooray. Oof, so yeah. Hisis and 30 other satellites are launching tonight. Most of these are CubeSats, like all the little 30 ones. Most of them do Earth observation. Some are Internet of Things. Five! Five of these things are from the US. So that's kind of cool. And I had all these pretty pictures to show you guys. Uh, so another one, so that's one of their 10 missions in 100 days. The next big one that they are, what size are the CubeSats? Somebody asks. Uh, they're typically between the size of like a briefcase to like a checked luggage size. They're rather small compared to like Hisis itself. I want to show you the picture of everything like getting all loaded into the payload because Hisis is like this big glob right around here and then right around the bottom there are all the CubeSats. So they are tiny compared to the Hisis. Tiny, which is why, you know, 30 of them can be launched at once. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I think it's also pretty cool that like, five of these are from uh, the US. I'm not sure why we're launching satellites for Internet of Things and I probably should have looked into that more but that's a thing so yes so yeah they're launching that tonight I am totally covering that tonight where the technology will work I promise just Microsoft why why Microsoft and I'm a Windows user and I say this so another neat mission that India is doing is they are sending their very first lunar rover to the South Pole, the Lunar South Pole, which has never been done before. And I'm super excited about this because unlike some of you, I totally miss the space race. So I, I really enjoy watching all of Isro's stuff because it's the closest thing I can get to, you know, 
the experience my parents had when they were watching all of this, you know, happen. So, Chandrayaan, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Chandrayaan 2, which literally stands for moon vehicle. This will be their second uh, moon mission, lunar mission. The first one, I think, was just an orbiter, which had some NASA payload on it. This one was supposed to be done in conjunction with Roscosmos, but things happened. Uh, there was some technology that Roscosmos, you know, was supposed to provide that failed in previous missions. So they essentially couldn't, pro couldn't deliver. They backed out. They were supposed to provide the lander, and I, they were supposed to provide the designs for the rover, which was to be built in India. Neither one of those things happened. And so India, rather than just giving up, is like, we'll do it all ourselves. So they did it all themselves. They built a new lander. They designed and built a rover. It is not the fanciest rover, but they did it all themselves. This is a purely Indian project. No international co you know, cooperation. No uh, help from anybody else. Everything that is for this payload. Hey, thanks for the subscription, Bill Nash. Uh, everything is essentially from India for this Indian mission, which is super rare and super cool. And... The rover isn't doesn't have a lot of payload. The lander doesn't have a lot of payloads. The rover is essentially going to do on-site chemical analysis. And I forget, I honestly forget what the lander is supposed to do, but they're sending an orbital, a lander, and a rover all at the same time. That's pretty cool. Um, for any of those that are curious, the cost is about 125 US million. Which, when I did the math, was around the price of one lunar rover in for the Apollo missions. So, I'm so sorry. So yeah, it was about the cost of one lunar rover for the Apollo missions, adjusting for inflation. And yeah, the new space race in the future will totally be China versus India versus SpaceX. Most people are already saying it's China versus SpaceX. So, speaking of China, they too are sending yet another lunar mission. They're sending a lunar rover too within the next few months. They're supposed to launch in early December, so really soon, like before India launches their lunar mission. It is called... I'm gonna murder this. Chang'e 4, which is and it's named after the Chinese moon goddess. So yeah, this is their fourth mission. And it was delayed several times. There are payloads from several countries, various experiments. China essentially is upping up their lunar program because they want to have a crewed landing in the 2030s. So the cool thing about this this particular mission is that they're going to have a container with potato seeds and essentially like a model organism or weed seeds not cannabis but flowers that most of us would consider weeds for clarification and it's actually i'm not even going to try to pronounce it but it's essentially a flower that most people consider a weed and is a model organism and they're sending silkworm eggs and the hope is that the seeds will germinate and produce oxygen while the eggs hatch and produce carbon dioxide. And they get a cute little, you know, simple uh, synergy going on. And the cycle, you know, supports each other. So that is pretty cool. I have no, I don't think they're going to return the samples. I think they're just going to stick a camera in there and, and uh, watch them remotely. So, yeah, cool, biology on the moon happening, because it's been a while. 
it is a cute little biome. It's going to be the cutest little biome. I am super excited about that because I am a nerd. And the very, very last thing I have for you guys, which kind of got slid in at the last minute, is, uh, hey, did you know that caves, you know, cave paintings aren't just hunting scenes? Yeah, some uh, researchers from the universities of Edinburgh and Kent looked at cave drawings in Turkey, Spain, France, and Germany that all have various animal symbols. These were painted over like tens of thousands of years. So they chemically dated the paint, took these drawings, compared them to what the night sky would have looked at, you know, for these particular time periods, and apparently found things that lined up. So these drawings are actually, you know, asterisms or constellations. I think that's pretty cool. We're all used, well, I shouldn't say we're all used to. A lot of us are used to the standard 88 constellations, but there are so many, like, asterism, we'll call them asterisms, or like, skull, cultural, <laughs> cultural constellations, like Skylore. And they vary wildly over the world. But the fact that these were pretty consistent and actually showed like precession and weren't just, you know, hunting scenes is pretty cool. This is important because it will essentially revolutionize how we view and study prehistoric peoples. Is I, I don't know about most people, but for me, I'm like, okay, well, they don't have computers. They may or may not have had tools. They weren't as intelligent. No, this changes that. They're like, we are just as... Thank you for thank you for posting the link. Um, it's uh, Pamela actually found it in Forbes this morning too. But it'll it'll essentially change all the view of that. Like, oh hey, they understood procession, which we really attributed to the ancient Greeks way before you know the ancient Greeks wrote it down. They didn't have a you know, written writing system, but they sure could paint on caves. Other people understood it, and yeah, it just took us a while to understand it. So, that's all I have for you today. Hi! I am having technical difficulties, otherwise you would have seen pretty pictures, Fenring. I am totally going to fix this <laughs> later. Um, so yeah, that's all I had for you. I am going to scroll up and see if I can catch any questions. Now is the time to ask me questions. Ask questions in chat, because even though I'm not an astronomer, Dr. Pamela is, and she's here. So yeah, ask, ask away. And yeah, totally, totally tag either me or Pamela or both of us. Best, you know, mostly both of us. All right, so scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. Do, 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 do. Mostly CubeSats. Do, do, do. So I'm going to assume nobody has questions. <laughs> Hi, Keeper of Maps. Um, Dat Dolphin. Hi! I don't think I've seen you around these parts before. Uh, Dat Dolphin asks, these remote farms, are they harvested or modified remotely too, or will they just look at their progress with cams remotely? I think they're just going to observe with cams. I don't think they want to open up the container and expose the organisms to essentially the harsh lunar environment. That's how I would do it. The problem with the Chinese programs is that I don't read Chinese and I can't always find a good translation of what's going on because otherwise I would totally cover that more, but China is China 
and it is an exercise in experiencing what it's like to be illiterate when you look at Chinese for me. And Veronica asks, <laughs> nope, only th theoretical physical questions, not astronomy today. Oh my goodness, Larry. All right, so Veronica asks, what was your favorite part of the launch yesterday? Now I feel bad because I'm like, launch? What launch? I'm going to have to actually look at the calendar. You mean InSight? The InSight landing? I'm thinking you might be talking about the InSight landing. Um, I was highly amused by the dust cover image of the first uh, image InSight sent back. I was highly amused by the fact that there was a dust cover still on there and it was just dirt everywhere. And it, it made me, I don't know, I was amused because there's part of me that's like, take the dust cover off. And another part of me that's like, yes, pictures. Yes. Oh, Veronica, it's totally okay because we all lose track of time. I was just panicking because I'm like, oh no. And yeah, it totally landed right side up, which is always, always cool. Nominal. Yeah, watching my first launch, I was like, they say nominal a lot and that doesn't sound positive, but apparently, you know, it's a very happy word that makes all the people, you know, happy. Yeah, transparent dust cover. Like, I've only ever seen that essentially. Now I have to think about it. I've seen that on my, like, the 360 photo equipment I use. But, yeah, the fact that they use that. And, like, part of me is like, was that plastic? Is it glass? It also... I also selfishly want to know what manufacturer of lens they have on there for everything. Yeah. Nominal means just right, not too much or too little. Alrighty then. Dust cover lens was pro, nuff said. This, this, this is true. This is very true. because I would expect nothing less from NASA. And it had to survive, what, like six months in flight and the landing? Like, yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. That's, that's pretty incredible. So, as I awkwardly flip around for a gazillion different things. A gazillion different things. All right, anybody else have any other questions? Do, 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 do. Oh. I'm impressed that the CubeSat survived the journey with no apparent difficulties. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Alright, so now's the time for the awkward fundraising plug. Whoa! So, as most of you already know, we lost our funding from NASA. It wasn't totally unexpected. There were budget, over, you know, overruns. We were warned of the cuts, but still, it's always a nail-biting experience at the end of a year when you're like, okay, are we going to be renewed? Are we not going to be renewed? Kind of thing. So yeah, until we identify further funding, myself and several other members of the team that you haven't met are you know, essentially going to be out of a job, which is a little scary for, you know, some of us. I'm fortunate that, you know, I'm essentially just fortunate, but yeah, I would like a job. <laughs> um, anything helps, really, honestly, if it's only $20, it's only $20. As... Uh, some insight for how much it costs to run these things. My Sunday shows, I did the numbers. 
I spend about an hour streaming and I probably spend about an hour before that prepping for the stream. So it's two hours. And that's essentially, I'm just going to put my salary out there. I get paid $15 an hour, which is actually incredibly good for this area. There's a very low cost of living. So that's $30 an hour for salary or $30. Yeah. $30 a session for salary. And if I do that four times a month, that's $120. So it essentially costs $120 a month to keep the my data processing stuff going. So daily space, you know, this is a daily thing. It's a little... Because I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> Uh, it can be a, a little intimidating to set up. Like you, we have to set up all the OBS things. We have to put in all the things. So, yeah. It takes time to produce this. And in a perfect world, everybody gets paid for their time. So, yeah. Yeah. We could use the donations. We could use any and all attention you want to bring to this any seriously and we're going to be having a, a hangout-a-thon at right before Christmas where I'm actually going you know to go out to Pamela's place Woo! at some point during the night we are going to be playing video games if you want to play video games with us please please donate donate. You want to play video games with us for an hour? Okay. Let's say $10 for $10 donation to play video games with us for an hour. Now, if you want to pick what video game, you know, you want us to play, that might be a bit more because we may not have it in our library. And, you know, you pick. So yeah, you get to pay more. Um, we have merch. We have the Streamlabs donations. We have bits. Unfortunately, the bits donations don't uh, tally into the bit on the bottom. But it's still there. And 60000 is our goal. Uh, the servers are paid for for another year. Pamela's salary is covered for another year. Oh, if you want to play guitar on stream, man. I mean... We're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, say no. Yeah, we, we can talk about that. Um, yeah, and as Pamela said, she's not taking salary off of this. The 60000 is literally to pay for everybody else on the team. Um, yeah, it's literally for everybody else on the team. Like me and everybody else you don't see. And Susie, and Tanner, and Jay, and I don't know about Matt's funding. So yeah, yeah, we would like to work after the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, working is cool. Working on this project is cool, and I'd like to continue it. <sighs> I do it for the coffee. <laughs> So yeah, there's the end of my awkward fundraising spiel. So thank you for all of your patience. Thank you for all of your support. Um, thank you for, yeah, tuning in and watching me struggle through all of this and bumble along. And yeah, we're totally going to work our ass off to get more grants. Pamela is always awesome about that, but really any little bit helps to help make this a lot less scary for everybody because it, it is scary you know i would say right you're congress critters but i mean i don't yeah yeah we'll get money we just need some holdover anyways for real end of the fundraising spiel so <laughs> Oh, that actually doesn't help writing that. Yeah, no. 
Yeah. Because then they're like, what? Yeah, employers and matching donations? Yeah, that would be awesome. That would totally be awesome, matching in, uh, matching donations or just donations in period. Okay, really. Really, really, I promise that's the end of the fundraising spiel. So, yeah. Thanks again for your patience. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all are awesome. And, uh... I'm going to, you know, roll the credits. Woo!